This is Super Yacht News with Yves Sisman. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It is uh, Thursday the 31st of March. A lot of information to go through tonight, so let's get cracking. So the first story is, is the MYA has been MIA after turning off the AIS and has now turned up in the UAE. The backstory is Moti Arte was in the Maldives and um, Andrei Milnichenko, the owner of Moti Arte and Sailing Arte, which was in Trieste in Italy, he was added to the sanctions list. And as a result of the, being added to the sanctions, Sailing Arte was seized in, in Italy. Meanwhile, Moti Arte is out in the Maldives. So uh, the vessel went dark, turned off the AIS, and they headed out to, well, we didn't know where they were going at first, and um, they were missing for about three weeks, and they turned up in the UAE. In actual fact, what happened is, as a result of the sanctions, the, both vessels which were flagged in the Isle of Man were deregistered by the Isle of Man, so they had no flag state. So the Motiate is out in the Maldives, and they uh, turned up in the UAE, as I said, about three weeks later. They were allegedly escorted by an Iranian warship because they were flying no flag, they had no registry on the vessel. Um, and they ended up in a place called uh, Ras al Khaimah, uh, which is in the United Arab Emirates, and they are still there as, 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 as recently as yesterday, as you can see here from this uh, photograph from a subscriber. Um, the vessel is, uh, it, it was interesting about this photograph is, is that you can see there's no flag on the mast, on the, on the, on the flag staff at the back, at the stern of the vessel. So, and also sources have told me that the owner of Moti Arte has applied to China to become a new flag state, a Hong Kong based um, flag they will fly if, if this is true. So that will be interesting to see. It'll be the first super yacht I've seen with a Chinese flag. All right, guys, uh, on to the main story, and that is that Nord, Moti Yacht Nord, has arrived in Vladivostok. So on the 10th of March, I posted a video uh, called Russian Super Yacht Escape Plan. And I talked in that video, 10th of March, about the fact that this vessel was preparing to go to Vladivostok. And at the time, um, nobody else, nobody in the mainstream media was talking about this. I don't think they still are, actually. Um, and it was such, a, it was such a, st a theory that I had that I even had people in the comments telling me that they knew people on board who worked on board and it was not true and it was fake news. Well, it was a theory that I had and uh, it has it has come to fruition that and they have arrived in in Vladivostok as you can see from these photographs from various different Instagrammers. Um, she is the first vessel as far as I know she's the first super to arrive there in Vladivostok but she's not going to be the last um, to get there Nord has traveled uh, approximately 6,250 nautical miles. The other vessel that I believe is heading there is Motiot Amadea Amadea is currently crossing the Pacific Ocean. She's traveling from Manzanillo in Mexico to Fiji. I think she's going to Suva. I'm not sure of the actual location, but she's going to Fiji. Uh, and I, I believe from Fiji, she will then uh, head up to Vladivostok. Um, she's currently crossing, as I said, the Pacific, um, and she's doing a 5,070 nautical mile trip. That is uh, the equivalent of 5,835 regular miles or 9,390 kilometers. It really does seem to be Vladivostok or bus, doesn't it? Okay, so uh, on another story, Motiot Ragnar, you remember the, the story of Motiot Ragnar? She, um, was, she went to Norway. Uh, this is one of the first videos I posted uh, of, of, of Russian sanctions. She went, she arrived in Norway, well she was in Norway for a few weeks and then she went to Narvik to get fuel and she was boarded by um, the Norwegian uh, authorities plus military. They did a search of the vessel and then uh, as far as I know, that uh, once, the, once they'd been boarded and searched they were released. However, the vessel needed to refuel and once the story got, got out in Norway, nobody really wanted to sell them any fuel and they'd been sat there for five weeks. The, uh, the captain even went public uh, talking to various newspapers and, and, and interviews uh, on television, I believe, talking about how the fact that they were being victimized for because nobody would sell them fuel and they hadn't done anything wrong. And the owner, who is allegedly a ex-KGB, 
is not uh, on the sanctions list. So, you know, what was the problem? Um, eventually, the authorities got involved and they, they got a guy from uh, hundreds of kilometers north to travel down with a fuel truck and give them enough fuel to uh, head on their way. Anyway, after almost two months of being stuck in Norway, she finally left today and she's now heading to, uh, to Malta, which is her home port, I believe. All right, guys, next story is uh, British crew of Russian yachts could be sanctioned under new legislation. So the British government is working on new legislation. That means that crew who work on yachts owned by Russians could face UK sanctions, according to the Foreign Office. So the aim is to make it more difficult for UK-based companies and individuals to work for or offer assistance to Russia, Russian-owned super yachts. Um, what is essentially going on here is they're saying that a lot of the crew on board some of these vessels are British, um, and in, in the case of uh, in Italy, uh, some crews have refused to cooperate with police over revealing the identity of the vessel's ultimate owner, and um, and some of of the yachts have British nationals as captains. So I think I think the plan is here is to, is to make it very difficult and, and to potentially use powers to make it illegal for those people or to make it more um, difficult for them to not cooperate with authorities. And in the case of uh, some, it, to make it impossible for them to be able to get crews to sail, potentially sail vessels out of UK jurisdiction. And you might know if you watched the last video that the first super yacht, which was Super Yacht Fee, I believe you pronounce it, P-H-I, was arrested in Canary Wharf in London. And interestingly, that vessel was, um, uh, was there apparently to collect an award uh, for a uh, super yacht design. Um, more about that video, uh, more, more about that yacht in the next video. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up here. And what I, what I would like to say is uh, something I should say in every video really, but I wanna thank everybody for contributing. There are so many people contacted me with information and photographs and videos. And I, I, I just wanna say that I couldn't do it without you. Uh, I have my partner here who's, who, who, re who does research for me as well. And she's brilliant as well. But without everybody working together, we could not do this. Uh, without you guys so I, I just want to say that I appreciate everybody's I might not say it in every video and I know a lot of people want to remain anonymous but I just want to thank you if you've sent anything to me whether I've used it or not I just want to thank you for that uh, one other thing I saw a really interesting article tonight on a, a website called highsutton.com uh, I'll, I'll put a link uh, h-i-s-u-t-t-o-n.com it's called Russian Oligarch's Ginormous Yacht Arrives in Unlikely Hiding Place. So check out that story. I'll put a link up here and in the description and stuff like that. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and like this video because it really helps to push it out to everybody uh, in YouTube world. Thanks very much. Anyway, guys, I'll catch up with you soon. Bye bye. OK, so the first story is the, is MYA has been MIA after turning up. Oh. It's going to be a mouthful. MYA has been MIA after turning off AIS and now has turned up in the UAE. <laughs>